One of the things we value most as developers is the ability to get things done effectively and efficiently, which is why good tooling is so important to us. That's why today we're going to be talking about some of my favorite Visual Studio Code extensions and why they're essential to the work I do every day. What's up everyone, my name is Ben Hong and I'm a Vue.js core team member, which means it should be no surprise that I'm a big fan of open source tools. That being said, when it comes to open source tools, one of the most popular ones that people use is Visual Studio Code, which is an open source IDE built by Microsoft. And one of the reasons it's so popular is because it has so many features and it's so good for what it is that like, honestly, I'm surprised it's free. Like I would be happy to pay for it normally, to be honest. And so for those who didn't know, in case you needed additional functionality or features for VS Code, you can do that with something called extensions. And so with that said, let's dive into some of my favorite ones in my workflow. When it comes to setting up your IDE, one of the things that every developer has that's usually pretty unique is how they like their IDEs to be set up. So jumping into VS Code, whether that be you know, the font color choice that you prefer, um, font size, different typography, or even like the color theme that you like, um, you can see here that, you know, you spent, honestly, you spend the time to customize it to the way you like it since, let's face it, you're staring at the screen for a long time. And so eventually over the years, you develop certain tools and stuff that help make you really effective. Well, it would really be a pain if we went ahead and lost all that or every time we need to migrate to a new machine that we had to somehow manually copy all of those things. So that's why the first extension I want to introduce you to is setting sync. And so the way we can find that is inside of VS Code, if you, there's a couple ways, but if you go to view, and then extensions, you'll see that we're able to access it that way. You can also do a uh, command KX and then I think Windows control KX. And so you can see here now that we see all the different extensions that I've installed as well as some recommended ones here based on the VS Code algorithm. And so to check out uh, setting sync, so I'm just gonna go ahead and look up setting sync here. Uh, you'll see the one you're gonna want is from Sean Khan. As you can see here, it's super popular. It has over 2.1 million downloads and has 4.5 stars. So Super, super awesome extension. And so what it basically does is it allows you to then automatically sync your preferences up into GitHub. And so if I go into my GitHub account, you'll see here that underneath uh, my profile, there's this link for your gist. So what it is, it's a bunch of text files basically that allows you to share through the basically the Git version control that we're used to. So you can see here that you can like fork it, comment it, start it. Uh, but here you can actually see that inside of my cloud settings, this is where we can actually like, it stores all of the JSON. So whether it's all of the extensions that I have installed, um, when it comes to settings, it even has things like, uh, you know, my preferences from like trimming new lines, whether we want semicolons, what are my prettier settings. Um, and so all of this is really cool to have. And it even has a point where I believe it's the key bindings too. So when you're customizing your key bindings, all of that is also saved, which is amazing because a lot of times we spend so much time trying to figure out how to optimize that it would really be a waste to lose it. So um, if you have VS Code, regardless of the tech stack you have, um, definitely install setting sync if you're using VS Code. Can't recommend it highly enough. Another extension I really like is a bracket pair colorizer. And so here in the marketplace, if I go ahead and open this up, uh, you'll see here that we have bracket pair colorizer and we want two so this is one this is two this is the most recent one so it's a bit more performant and so what you see here uh so it's by conrad uh, s and has over 1.6 million downloads and again as you can see lots of happy customers and so basically what it does is it allows you to basically pair the brackets inside of your code with different colors and by pairing it's not something you do manually um, so to give you an example here, you'll notice that inside of this JavaScript, it's actually highlighting like the fact that the starting one is yellow and that the inside one is purple. And so if we had to go further in, for example, like we had this new one called like my component and for some reason it was an object, which wouldn't make sense in this case for those familiar with Vue, but you can see now that you actually get different color brackets, which is amazing because as you go through and you're like, oh, this is like, you know, like a test function and then you go like, you have an arrow function with parentheses and then you can you know pair things like this makes a huge difference when you're trying to debug really heavily nested code and trying to figure out what belongs to what because i don't know about you but i've definitely been in cases where i've had long lines of code and i'm like not quite sure where the brackets belong to so being able to easily go like yeah the beginning one is yellow and so when i'm scrolling down and i've lost context at the top that i know that oh the end one is the uh, yellow as well so that belongs to the top one uh, so definitely a really uh, good developer experience uh, improvement. So if you don't have that already, definitely recommend installing that one. 
Another extension that's really helpful in VS Code is called Duplicate Action. So I'm going to go ahead and bring it up here inside of the marketplace. And so it's all the way down here. Um, so this one is a little less popular. You can see it only has uh, about 99,000 downloads, but it's still highly rated. And so the reason this is actually a really useful one is because by default, if we go inside of a project, you'll see that our file structure actually, when like VS Code helps you manage the files, you can copy and paste things by default, but there's no duplicate function by um, sort of natively inside of VS Code. So you can see here I can copy, I can right click and I can paste it. And I can, you know, and then I have a copy and then I could rename it to like about.view, right? In this case, just be another page. But the reality is that we're actually trying to copy files a lot and it's a bit of work to like have to right click, copy, then select the folder, then paste, then rename. That's a lot of steps. And so for what is actually really a common scenario. So with this new duplicate action, you'll see here on the really bottom, it adds this other option here or, and it even adds the keyboard shortcut. So in this case, I would typically just do command D to duplicate it. And you can see here in the, in the top here that it gives me the prompt in order to rename it. So then I can just go about dot view, hit enter, boom, everything's duplicated and done. So uh, definitely a small improvement as far as file management, but for something that's done so uh, often, it's definitely a great one to have. So. Another extension I really like is called Text Pastry. And so I learned about this one um, when I was using Sublime Text earlier on um, from West Boss, but it's uh, one that I definitely think more people don't know about. So it's called Text Pastry. And this one's similarly not as popular. It has just about a little over 35,000 downloads, and but it's, it's very highly rated because what it basically does, it supercharges your ability to utilize multi-cursor things. So for example, when you're copying something into uh, like a file, like, I don't know about you, a lot of times I have like lists of text, text items that I like, I need to basically number. And so typically if we were to like manually add line numbers to this, you typically have to go like one, oh, whoop, this is one, two. And so you have to do this manually all the way down, which is a super tedious task for something that computers are really good at. And so instead what you can do here is you'll see that um, I just highlight like the block of text that I want, for example, that I need to add multiple cursors to, and then I'll do Command Shift L, and then let's jump back to the beginning. Um, and then what you do is inside of my, um, let's see, okay. So I open the command palette, and you'll see that text pastry gives you a bunch of options that you can use in order to increment according to the line. So if I just need one through whatever it is, that's all I do. I hit that, and you'll see that automatically it goes one through 14, and it just works. Um, other things that it's really good at, for example, um, is that you can even do letters, so A to Z, whatever you want. Um, if you're like, oh, I don't want it to start from one, that's totally fine, you can do it a range. Let's start at 50 instead. And you'll see that it goes to 50 to 63, for example. And the other one, which is not as commonly known about, but super helpful is if you need to generate a list of UUIDs, especially for something like sample data, just hit UUID, boom. You see here, we just have a bunch of uh, unique identifiers ready for you to use inside of like a sample JSON file that you're testing out. So definitely a fun trick to have in uh, your uh, toolkit as you're trying to figure out how to best, you know, like as you're generating data sort of at the time. So definitely a handy tool to, so definitely a handy tool to have in your toolkit uh, when you need to generate basically like sort of like a manual set of data, um, but with a little bit more uh, programmatic assistance. So this is definitely a great extension to keep in your back pocket, especially for when you're dealing with this sort of like manual creation of like, you know, numbers, letters, like sequences, and you, you want to do it programmatically, but need a little bit more fine tuning as far as a manual uh, process goes. So yeah. Another extension that's really helpful across teams that I recommend everyone have is called Better Comments. And so here, you see this one is super popular, has over 1.2 million downloads and five stars, so super happy customers. And so what it basically allows you to do is all the time when we're adding comments to code, let's be honest, it's usually this boring gray block of text that like is honestly can be hard to read depending on the theme. Well, Better Comments says that basically we know that a lot of times there are certain things you're trying to do with comments. And so why not use color to better communicate those things to your teammates and other developers? And so how this might work, for example, you'll see here is like, let's say we want to ask a question about, you know, like my component. Well, typically you would add like a block. It can be single line comments, but I'll use multi-line in this case. And you'll, you might be like, oh, okay, like what is this component or like might need refactoring, right? And so this is fairly standard, but here with better comments, you notice that when I add a question mark, it immediately switches it to, uh, in this case is blue, but I think with different themes will be different colors. 
then it might be like, oh, you need to do something else. For example, it might be like to do, make sure to add this file. And you see it's orange. You need to go if it's important, right? Like, please don't do this thing. And then if something's, you know, uh, that's more like a, a warning caution. But then if something is like important to be like, hey, remember that this is important. And so these states and allow, allow you to basically colors to have some sort of color syntax highlighting with this is super great. So whether it's params and you just like takes a name, um, whatnot, and like what it does, like this is awesome for just improving maintainer experience on a code base. So um, if you haven't had a chance to install this and use it, I uh, can't recommend it highly enough. Better comments. Check it out. And last but not least, the one extension that every Vue developer should have in their toolkit is Vitor. And so here, the way it's uh, spelled is V-E-T-U-R. And so you'll want the one by Pinewu, as you see, with 6.1 million downloads. So by far the most popular one we've uh, talked about today. And very happy customers, it's like over 4.5 stars. But basically, what it allows you to do is integrate all of the syntax highlighting auto-completion that you would normally expect from different files. And so when you're working with single file components, you know whether it's syntax highlighting for the JavaScript, HTML, CSS, all of this is super important because you want to make sure that you still get the benefits of like auto completion and all of that, but you also want to be able to enhance it with things like, for example, if I go in here and type a directive, for example, you'll see that it already has all of the ones pre-populated that come built in with Vue. And so enhancement like this can make us a lot more efficient as developers, especially when working on a Vue.js code base. That said, another extension worth mentioning in the same breath of Vitor actually is Sarah Drasner's VS Code extension pack. So I believe Vue VS Code, uh, here we go, Vue VS Code extension pack. Yep, so this is by Sarah Drasner. And so this is a little bit different from standard extensions in the sense that it comes with a collection pack. So in here you can see inside the extension pack, there's uh, 10 different ones that Sarah recommends that uh, teams install when it comes to uh, coding with Vue. So you can always check that out for additional recommendations and other extensions to check out. And that's a wrap. For those wondering about where to find those extensions, I'll make sure to include a link inside of the description below so that you can go to them directly. But otherwise, if you have any suggestions as far as other VS Code extensions that you really love, I'm always looking to enhance my workflow, so happy to take suggestions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.